I would give you my heart, but it is a bloody thing, and misshapen from the idealized form by left ventricular hypertrophy <laughs> and the usual asymmetry of sprouting veins and arteries, of which some on close examination would show fatty streaks of white against the proper red, developing atherosclerosis <coughs> gifted by my love of ice cream. <laughs> would you take a ring instead? Round, symmetric, never tarnishing, plugged only by your finger? <laughs> we'll, we'll see if I can get that on the physiology exam. Uh, so actually, in keeping with the heart bit, I thought I would read a bunch of poems dealing about my wife, or me and my wife. Uh, actually, uh, she is one of the main reasons for why I write poetry. The way I started was uh, I was uh, in college and it was a work-study school and I was on a co-op job in New York in a winter and it was a really bad winter. There was one storm with like 12 inches. It was really bad. And my girlfriend, now my wife, was abroad in France for a year. And so I was starting, I guess, to feel lonely. And so I started writing some poetry. So this is one of the first ones I wrote. Apart. We are together, though apart, a thousand miles bridged by quiet thought, each in our separate rooms, our separate selves, remembering cities held in common. The first glance of choice concealed in a crowd. A folk dance, the first walk toward dawn. The first kiss on the old stone steps the first tears of parting, and the next. And after each long absence, a return in the joy of refinding and being found. So uh, actually, yeah, we had some times apart and together, and you know, eventually, uh, eventually we're, we were together, and uh, we got married in uh, 1971, and for the next 24 years, we were hardly ever apart. And then I had a, yeah, no, a long time ago, what did I say? Uh, I, I had sort of a mini sabbatical in uh, Stockholm, Sweden, which was great. And uh, she came with me for the month of August. And actually, our daughters were with us for part of the time, too. And then she had to go home. Daughters had to go home because the school year was starting, right? Uh, but there was a meeting still in Stockholm, and so I stayed on into September, and I got lonely. So this is <laughs> Stockholm in September. With the morning, I stride briskly, or is it flight, toward the urban kaleidoscope, spun quickly to bedazzle and distract. See the glorious rooftops, turrets, and spires, portholes 80 feet up. See the carvings heritage and garlands. See the water and the bridges and the boats, urgent buses and taxis and trains. But don't hesitate too long in a quiet park. When I have walked hours of streets and shops, a museum or two, and at last the feet and back, dulled eye and head, say emphatically, enough, then I must return to the pleasant flat, where every room is filled with your absence and none gives me sanctuary. This uh, was a poem uh, on a later birthday. The Lump. For your birthday, you got a lump. Well, it had been there for a while in your right breast, but you got the report. 99% chance it's OK. But there is that niggling 1%. You've been there before. You don't want to be Swiss cheese. It's probably all right, but this time there are some inconsistencies. So there should be more tests and more talk, and I am sure more worry. You sat calmly on our bed and relayed the information, and we went to sleep. I will hold you whenever you want, and then some. So for our 37th 
anniversary, after 37 years. After 37 years, we still walk hand in hand on Boston streets or sometimes Cape Cod sand. After 37 years, my heart still gives a leap at your flashing eyes or quiet face in sleep. After 37 years, the day is somehow amiss, if not completed with a goodnight kiss. After 37 years and two children grown, I know my best friend's wedding was our own. We also have, what shall I say, uh, more spontaneous times? Closet kiss. <laughs> For a short sleeved shirt, I was in the closet, and she came in, not to flirt, just to deposit, laundry. But our eyes met, we kissed and hugged a while till we were set, then exited with a quiet smile, the closet underneath the stairs, to return to more mundane affairs. The moral is this, a closet kiss should not be missed or dissed. <laughs> We still have a few problems we're trying to work out, though. <laughs> Snore. <laughs> My nighttime vocals, low and rumbling, half a snort and half a steam train, penetrate her ears despite the plugs, and toss her from the shore of sleep she struggles vainly once again to reach. So she tries tugging lightly on the sheet. It's not enough to move or quiet me. She contemplates a harder pull a desperate and not so loving pat upon the shoulder. But miraculously, there is a lull, a welcome respite to send her back to slumber. Then sometime later, I myself am wakened by a sweet song, her gentle whistle, rising, falling with her half the sheet. And so I lie and think, if only we could sing duets unheard in sleep. <laughs> Uh, another poem about bed. Middle ground. This morning when my wife crept softly out of bed and tiptoed carefully down the hall to go to early Reiki or the gym, she left my lumpiness in half-feigned sleep. I hid there from the coming day's demands and felt a rush of sybaritic joy to test the freedom of expanded space and moved into the middle of the bed. <laughs> Like Leonardo's man I lay, with limbs outstretched, encountering no barrier or even reprimand. How different was this from the nighttime norm of kiss goodnight and roll ourselves apart to hug opposing edges of the bed, avoiding inadvertent touch till dawn. I tired at last of lazy solitude and rose to wait with, for her with some regret that I had not awakened more constrained, but with her lying there beside me still. For though the middle is respected as a boundary when we sleep, it sometimes is a joyous place for us to meet. <laughs> Two more short ones. Just the outside. I have seen your body change from late teenage girl to young woman all the stages of your pregnancies and years of motherhood, through menopause and now the slow silvering of the hair. I have loved it all, for this is the house in which you dwell. At last, a good walk. Two paths ran through the woods, over hills and alongside streams, crossed, diverged, and crossed again, and finally met and merged, and we two walkers in the woods, once on separate paths, having kissed and walked away, and kissed again, now walk hand in hand, steadying each other's stumbles, and knowing there were other paths, we look into each other's eyes and smile. Thank you.